Hello there. Today is gonna be a prime example of I'm doing a thing, so you do not have to do that thing. And in fact, I insist that you don't do that thing. You all know me at this point. I don't have a lot of like hard and fast rules or like intense opinions when it comes to making coffee. I think coffee is really, really fun. I think you should make it the way you wanna make it because like, honestly, there's not really a wrong way. There are so many different ways of brewing. There are so many different things that you can put in your coffee. It's just an infinite realm of delicious possibilities. And whichever of those possibilities works for you, works for me, makes me happy. All that being said though, I think I have found my breaking point when it comes to brewing coffee. I think I have found the one thing that I want to make a rule about <laughs> that you should probably not do this. And again, I'm hedging with the probably because I'd like to give leeway to people, but you'll see. This rule came in the form of not one, not two, but in fact, many, many videos that I found online of people doing this and then having less than stellar results. That thing is brewing coffee with milk and not simply just having a pour over with milk, which I suppose one could do and I actually did on this channel quite a long time ago, but in fact, putting milk in your coffee brewer and letting it brew. Even saying those words just hurts my soul a little bit. Clearly though, it is a thing people have done. There are videos about this. It is a thing people have heard of or seen the videos and then want to do themselves. And I, I would like this video to kind of be your friendly, helpful friend instruction of, hi buddy, maybe we don't do that. So with all of that, welcome to the tour. My name is Morgan and I will be your guide as to why you should not put milk in your coffee brewer. But before we get to that, I do wanna make a quick note that the merch has dropped. This is very exciting. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw this a couple days ago, but this is the coffee plant winter design. Uh, we have this lovely tulip loss here on the left-hand pocket side. Uh, we have full coffee plant prints on either sleeves and everything is super comfy and I have not stopped wearing it since I received samples. We have three different apparel options. We have the full hoodie, which is what I'm wearing here. We also have a cropped hoodie and we have a long sleeve tee. Now, all of these are in unisex size and if you would like to check them out for yourself, mdcdrip.com, which I will also link in the description. Anywho, there are a whole bunch of different machines that I've seen people pour milk into, from drip coffee makers to Keurigs to espresso machines. And I thought, since we recently got it, we have our Ranchilio Silvia Pro X in the background, and I thought that would be a fit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we are not, <laughs> I'm not putting milk in that machine. However, I did get us kind of a, a sacrificial machine, if you will. <laughs> Welcome to the party, buddy. You have no idea what you're in for. As we'll talk about shortly, putting milk in your coffee machine, and I guess spoiler alert for the entire thesis of the the video will ultimately ruin your machine. So we have a, a little Black & Decker five cup machine here that we're gonna use today for demonstration purposes only. We will also, of course, for this experiment today, need some coffee. Regardless of the atrocities we're probably gonna commit against coffee today, I do actually have a really, really delicious bag of beans here that I'm excited to brew, I think, one way or another. This is from Red Bay Coffee, and it was also shipped to me through Trade Coffee, which will lead us into the sponsor for today's chaotic, I think, video. I wanna give a huge thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. With Trade, you can find new coffees from roasters all over the US. With a simple quiz, Trade will find the coffees that fit your exact needs and ship them to you straight from the roastery. You can also choose the frequency you want your coffee to arrive at so you'll never run out and you'll always have the freshest roasts. Now, after I filled out their quiz, one of the coffees that Trade recommended to me was this wonderful single origin Burundi coffee from Red Bay Coffee in Oakland, California. So while I brew this beautiful coffee with notes of orange blossom and turbinado sugar, I should also let you know that when you finish your bag, you can rate it on trade so they can continue to tailor the selections of coffee that they send to you. And also with the holiday season approaching, you can give your special coffee lover in your life the gift that keeps on giving with Trade's curated selection. And if all of that doesn't convince you, then let me tell you that as my viewer, you'll get $15 off your first three bags when you sign up using my exclusive link below. Just click the link in the description, take the quiz, and you'll be on your way. Thank you again to Trade for sponsoring today's video. This coffee has no idea what it's going to go through. So we've got our coffee, we have our brewer. We do need our final ingredient for this concoction. Milk, milk that expires on December 12th. It seems so, that's kind of fun. Now we could just jump into this, pour our milk in and get started, but I think there are some numbers and some, some facts and information we should look at before we do, because there, there's a very big difference about how we use water in coffee and how we use milk in coffee. <clears throat> All right. So, notebook time. Regardless of how the inside of a coffee machine works, regardless of any of the piping or any of the issues with like bacteria growing or 
any of that, there are some very big temperature differences between what we do with milk and coffee and what we do with water and coffee. Now, milk in general will scald or start to scorch at around 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, translation to that is about 82 degrees Celsius. I appreciate all the comments last time about using Fahrenheit. I will note that America is very strange. We use Fahrenheit. It's the number system I'm familiar with, but it's also not the majority number system. So we're translating today. What happens when milk scalds at that 180 degrees Fahrenheit slash 82 degrees Celsius temperature is that the enzymes and the proteins in it start to break down. They start to just kind of get nasty. They lose their integrity yeah. and you start to get some of those really icky like burnt milk flavors. You might say though, what about milk steaming drinks? Let's say you're making a latte, a cappuccino, a cafe au lait, any of those things. We add heat to milk there and yes, we do, but it's at a much lower temperature than this scalding Temp. Again, remember, scalding is at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. However, what the SCA recommends milk steaming temperature be at for, for milk drinks and milk espresso drinks is 139 degrees to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of numbers here, but hear me out. That is 55 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius. Even if you don't remember all those numbers, just know that milk steaming temperature is a good 30 degrees under what the scalding temperature is. All of that aside, that's how we work with milk. Those are, those are kind of like the two important points to remember. 180 degrees will start to scald your milk and about 145 degrees is a nice drinking temperature for your milk. Now water. <laughs> we brew coffee generally with water that is between 195 degrees Celsius. Whoops. <laughs> Not that. This is all very confusing. We brew coffee at between 195 degrees Fahrenheit and 205 degrees Fahrenheit. This is just under the boiling point, which is 212 degrees. Translated, that is between 90 degrees and 96 degrees Celsius. Can you imagine you're brewing water that is 195 degrees Celsius? Terrifying. Even worse, arguably, than what we're gonna do here today. Bear with me here. We're almost through the numbers section, I promise. When we brew coffee with water, we brew it at, let's just say, 200 degrees, just to make it a nice, even number. That is significantly over the scalding point of milk, which we remember is 180 degrees. And it is even further over the temperature that we would steam milk, which is about 145 degrees. So already one can deduce that putting milk in a coffee maker that will brew with temperatures probably close to 200 degrees, not a good idea. But there's an even bigger, even more important component to all of this of why one should not do this. And that is because of the, the make of something like this. Most drip coffee makers, most Keurigs, even most espresso machines all have like the same general idea to their build. When we open up our coffee machine, we have a couple main parts. You have the, the basket where you'll place your filter and your coffee in, very standard. And then you have kind of the water chamber, the water carafe, the water, whatever you wanna call it. But down here is where you will place all of your liquid. Now, when we look inside, inside the chamber you're gonna place your liquid, you have some sort of piping, some sort of tubing, some sort of anything that's then gonna draw your liquid up into this kind of the brew head that is then gonna disperse all that liquid, all that hot water evenly over your bed of coffee. Your coffee brews, the water drips all through and you get coffee and all those lovely things. Ideally, if you're taking care of your machine, you will descale it or run cleaning cycles on it pretty frequently because frequently there will be some sort of like mineral buildup in that pipe from, you know, whatever water you're using or just like stuff happens. Sometimes stuff gets in it. So you just wanna be making sure you're keeping it as clean as possible, which is pretty easy to do if you're just using water. Now, I don't know if you have ever heated up milk and accidentally left it somewhere for more than let's say 12 hours. I know I have. It's not pretty, it doesn't smell good, and it's definitely like a dangerous thing that you should not drink. Imagine here with me, in the morning, you get your coffee all set up, you pour your milk in, you brew your coffee, that milk, that hot milk travels all through your piping, your tubing, all the insides and the innards of your coffee machine. You take your cup of coffee, you drink it, and you leave like you would pretty much any other time you brew coffee. However, what you left was hot milk running through your pipes, just sitting there, just kind of simmering and getting all icky and bacteria is growing and all of that fun, exciting science stuff. Your coffee machine at the end of it is gonna be a very, very dangerous thing. <laughs> now that I have ideally explained to you why you should not put milk in your coffee machine, Let's do it. <laughs> It's kind of hard to explain how just wrong this looks and feels. Like there is something, something very sinister about this whole image, very cursed. Press the on button, so it's too late to turn back. Although I think it was too late to turn back the minute I started pouring milk into the machine. I've also got a thermometer so we can check the temperature of our concoction at the end of this, just to see what, what temperature that milk really did get up to. One thing to also note is that this extraction is happening at a much, much slower rate 
Hello. Anyways, as I was saying, this extraction is happening at a much slower rate than it would if you were using water. Milk and water have very different densities. Milk is a lot more dense and is having just a much more difficult time working through all that coffee, working through the paper filter, all of it. It's just, it's a different liquid all around. After a frankly alarming amount of time, we finally have a pot, a pot of liquid here that we are going to drink today, much to my chagrin. There is a slight burning wafting off of our pot of coffee today. However, looking at this, you just, you go over there, buddy. Now looking at this, this is not an unappealing color. This is usually about the color. Maybe, maybe this actually, this is a little bit lighter, but this is not completely dissimilar to the color that I look for when I add cream in my coffee. So appearances wise, seems all right. Temperature wise, currently this is sitting at approximately 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Now there is some heat loss when you transfer it to a cooler container. There is also heat loss during the entire brewing process because the fluid that you have in the chamber is brought up to temp and then it is transferred into the coffee. So during that entire time it's losing heat. But that being said, this was definitely brewed at one point and heated to over 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which was our, our scalding point like that. that is getting into the danger zone sort of there. Well, cheers to everyone else who has ever put milk in their coffee machine. I, uh, I feel like I am, I'm one with you. I feel like there is some, some solidarity here. Anyways, bottoms up. I mean, it's not great. <laughs> there is something terribly wrong about the flavor of all of this. Uh, the texture, the texture is kind of nice. I mean, you, you get what feels like a latte without foam. I'm, I'm not talking flavor wise, simply texture wise. You have a nice full fat, like creamy mouthfeel to it. You'd get some bitterness of some coffee and you get a whole lot of something that is not very good. <laughs> you get a whole lot of a strange kind of like acidic bitterness that's coming from a milk that has been heated to a point where it's proteins and its structure has started to break down. It's not the worst thing I've ever drank. I will say that like I, I made a latte with smashed up avocado once that was arguably worse than this. This is up there. This is, this is not a pleasant experience. I say as I go back for another sip, <laughs> I think it's just the curse of holding something in my hand. If I'm, if I'm holding something, I will sip from it. So actually I'll just, just set that there and step away from the dangerous drink. Let's take a quick peek inside our coffee machine. Let's see what's happened. Cursed drink goes over here. We'll unplug you little buddy. You did your job well. Well, we got milk inside, obviously, but the issue is not necessarily that it is just milk inside the entire like plumbing, if you will, of this machine. The issue is that this milk is warm and warm milk that then cools. It's just a, it's an absolute breeding ground. It's, it's a playground for bacteria and, and not the fun kind of bacteria, the, the not so fun kind that you definitely should not be consuming. I could run a cleaning cycle of water through this machine. However, that in and of itself would not clean this machine in its entirety. I could run a descaling cycle and still, still, you would most likely have bacteria left over throughout your entire machine that you could not reach physically either by trying to take this apart or just running continuous cycles through it, which unfortunately leaves me to say, rest in peace, tiny machine. You did your job. You proved once and for all that the thing that you should not do is something that you should not do. <laughs> this video may have seemed pretty silly to some people. It may seem obvious that you're not supposed to put milk in your coffee machine, but the internet has proven time and time again that people will do that. And hear me out, on paper, brewing with milk doesn't seem like a bad idea. Like milk and coffee go deliciously together. Like I am, I am a big milk and coffee person. However, this process itself, the process of putting milk in a coffee machine, whether it's a drip brewer, whether it's a Keurig or a pod machine, or whether it's an espresso machine is not so stellar. It's, it's not great for you or your wallet when you inevitably have to buy a new machine for yourself. And I can only hope that today I saved at least one person's machine. If I, if I stop one person from putting milk in their coffee machine, I will consider this a success. <laughs> that being said, please don't put milk in your coffee machine. That is my only coffee rule and I will stand by it. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Again, there will be lots of links in the description down below. As always, lots of new fun winter merch. And if you would like to order it before the holiday season, I would recommend you do that like very, very soon. Anyways, I'm going to head off. I am Morgan Drinks Coffee on all the platforms that I'm active on. I am on YouTube once a week for a main video, plus tons of shorts. I'm on TikTok and Instagram pretty much every day at this point, And I will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>